Steve here from Tech Toy Tinker and Retro Arena. We're going to do a quick overview of the latest JellOS build, which was released by Fute earlier today. We're going to start off here in the Options menu. So here we got the File Manager. You can back up and restore from the cloud. This is the add-ons along with Ports Master, which is where you get your ports from, obviously. This is obvious. It removes hidden files. 32 and 64-bit RetroArch, PSP, Scum, and Theme Master is an over-the-air theme downloader. There's also a new feature here in the main menu under System Settings, which will allow you to choose your governor. Work is currently underway to enable this as a per-system setting, not just a default blanket for the whole system. As you can see, Moonlight is here as well, and your network settings, your scraper. I'm going to give you guys a quick overview of all of the systems on here. There's not going to be much, if any, gameplay in this video because it's meant to be a quick overview. I will be doing another more in-depth video on ArcOS and JellOS in the next couple of days, which will show a lot of gameplay. If you get this build right now, Pico 8 is not working. It will be in the future build. It's already fixed right now. It just has to be pushed into the latest build. If you go into settings and then you go to the uh, the uh, file system advanced configuration or per system advanced configuration, this will allow you to choose your emulators per system. For Nintendo 64, I strongly advise that you use the Rice plugin for the best performance currently with RetroArch or Mupin in general, I should say. For Dreamcast, it does work okay. There's a little bit of audio stuttering here and there. And in a future build, Flycast 32 will be enabled instead of just being having to use 64-bit, which you will see an improvement from that. For MAME here, you can see there's several different cores. 2000, 2003, 2010, 2015, Standalone. And then there's Final Burn Neo and Alpha as well. For Moonlight here, you want to use this menu to connect your 503 to your PC. This will enable you to stream games from the PC directly to your device. I've tested it with things such as GTA 5, and that's worked out perfectly fine. I even played it online, and it still worked okay. What this does here should be obvious. I'm just giving you guys a quick little view of it. I'm not currently online, so you can't see anything. You've got your scraper here. And here, a lot of the settings for your games are built right into the emulation station menu, so you don't have to use the RetroArch menu to do it.
Here's Retro Achievements. A lot of people want that option and they search for it, so it is here under Game Settings. As I stated, I'm not going to do any actual gameplay today. I'm going to save that for a different video where I'm using the actual handheld instead of HDMI out from the handheld. So I'm going to wrap up this video here. I just wanted to give you guys a quick overview and show you what had changed. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care.